Okay, hi everyone. I'm Shashan from Inside Fit Technologies, and this is Sean. And today we are here to create Singapore's first brand of pet food made from insect protein. So by 2050, we predict that there will be about 10 billion people on Earth, and these people are going to require more food. And in order to farm more meat, animals need protein for them to grow. And the problem is that the key sources of protein in animal feed, soybean and fish meal, are currently insufficient. So since the 1960s, we have deforested almost 10 times the amount of land for soybean production, and there's only so much more land that we can continue to clear. And 90% of global fish stocks are currently uh, overexploited or depleted. Yet, 30% of the food that we produce globally is being wasted. So current methods do very little to solve this issue. We simply do not have as much land to keep expanding production, let alone talk about landfills. And even methods such as composting are not as commercially viable. So this is where we come in, insect feed technologies, using insects to create a cost-effective, reliable, and traceable solution. So how do we do all of this? We collect food waste, for example, your spent beer grains, or your soy waste from Mr. Bean, or even fruits and vegetables discarded from supermarkets, and we convert this into insect protein for animal feed, as well as insect fresh, which you see in front of you right now. That's insect poop, by the way. Yeah. And uh, nutrition, uh, commercially, these uh, insects are nutritionally superior. They form the basic diets of many animals, and they can be farmed locally 365 days a year. So this makes it very cost-efficient and very reliable for farmers. From an environmental perspective, insects reduce food waste, they reduce pressure of wild fish stocks, and they have very low or almost zero water requirements. This means protein production for a very, very low environmental impact. So why do we use the black soldier fly? The black soldier fly can consume a wide variety of waste streams, and they can grow very, very quickly, and they are very high in essential nutrients. Additionally, they are also very good at thriving at very high densities, which makes them very good for farming. Hi, everyone. My name is Sean. Yeah, I'll just continue. Yeah. And the market opportunity we are looking at is really huge. Right? Of course, you know, insects can be used for a lot of types of animal feed. We're talking about aqua feed, pet food, poultry, and swine. But for us, mainly we are specifically targeting the aqua feed industry and the pet food industry because of its relevance to Singapore and, of course, the growth potential of these markets. And right now, we're already well we're in terms of traction. We have a production facility in Tuas right now. We have upcycled at least 50 tons of food waste in the last one year. And, of course, we have already produced our black soldier fly meal that you see right there. Um, I think you can just pass around. Right? And basically, we have tested it. Uh, we are producing at least 65% crude protein per 100 grams of larvae that you see right there. And this is actually much better than your, I would say, um, sources of... Uh, I would say protein right now, like fish meal and soybean, they are barely 60%. Right? And of course, in terms of, right, I would say, traction, regulatory bodies in EU have already approved the use of insects for animal feed, in particular pet food. And right now, we are licensed by the SFA and supported by Singapore's multi-government agency Black Social Fly Task Force to actually scale up production and impact here in Singapore. So we're actually in talks to actually scale up production to actually process 10 to 20 tons of food waste daily. And that's just the tip. Um, just last month, we actually incorporated uh, less than two years and we were actually given the President's Social Enterprise Startup of the Year Award for innovation, for impact, and uh, ability to scale up fast. So right now, in the last one year, we have built a value chain of partners strategically and a pipeline that actually shows huge market validation. So if you see on the left, you see all the food waste manufacturers they are partnering with, FairPrice, Freshmart, even people like Mr. Bean. Right? And this is just really just the tip. You know, we are talking about almost 2,000 tons of food waste discarded every single day, right? And people are building biodigesters right now, we're being biogas plants, but these do not actually produce valuable materials like such as ours. We even have product market validation. We're selling our products right now in Tianhu, um, World Farm, Noi Gardens, all these brands that are retailing all these uh, green products. And of course, we have a partnership going on with World Bank, where we're actually supplying fertilizer to re-fertilize the crops in Bali. Of course, we have all these potential customers that we are in talks with right now. So right now, we have already established three revenue streams, um, the core products, our operating system, our carbon credit. And for this purpose of this project, we are actually focused on actually creating IP formulation in the formulation of pet food, starting with cats. And basically, what we are looking at is formulating, creating a consumer brand that we can actually extract more value down the value chain instead of actually just selling our raw insect ingredients. So we have really, in the last few months, I mean, really acted very fast. Uh, we have actually done up a whole detailed product development roadmap. 
we understand the market, we understand the customer segments, we can see where the customer trends are going for consumer pet feed using insects as a raw ingredient. So in Europe, you can see people are using that already. Um, and people actually came to us to say that they want to buy the insects as a raw ingredient to supply to Europe to make pet food. And for us right now, we are looking at August at a pre-launch of our first product. And by the next year, August, we're talking about at least 150K in revenue. And of course, we have the right team to do it. I myself, Sean, I was from Enterprise Singapore. I helped Uber and Coffee Meets Bagel scale up when they first came to Singapore. I have Lawrence with me, who's not here, because he's not a youth, um, of course. And he, he's, uh, he's, he's my, uh, he was previously in Bike Dance as the Chief of Ops. With me, with Fang Ling, Xie Shen, Shi Ling, and Song Tai, looking at different aspects of the product commercialization. And what we need to create more impact, of course, the 50K funding itself is good, right? It helps us to do four things. Firstly, a minimum viable product of insect-based cat food made in Singapore. Second, which is very important, which is key IP in insect pet food formulation. The third, looking at product launch with all these regulatory approvals that we need to push through. And of course, the marketing resources to at least have a pre-launch. And of course, if you have 50K more, that'd be good. Yeah. <laughs> so how you can help, right? I mean, of course, it's not just about financial uh, funds, right? We're talking about access to networks, access to funding, global markets, and partners. And of course, for us, it's really about becoming a financially sustainable company to become a global waste agri-tech business developer. So with that, I think uh, he's going to stop me. So yeah, so my name is Sean. Once again, uh, we are from Insect Feed Technologies, and we really believe in feeding tomorrow's world sustainably. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Your judges? Maybe I'll start off. Yeah. So I think you've come quite some way already in your concept development. You're even in that production. I can see the product yeah. already. So uh, I, I think that uh, the value proposition is clear and the need is there. I have two sort of questions to, for you to think about. Yeah. One, of course, food waste is an important stream of input right. for you, right? So how are you going to sustain the, the input source? Right. Where are you going to get it from? And do you think going forward, it is still cost effective for you to continue to use food waste as an mm -hmm. uh, input for your product. Yep. The second one is uh, one of the target user is aqua, aqua right. industry. And fish farmers, as we know, they are quite cost strapped. Uh. Right. Uh, so how are you going to nudge them yep. to use your product over, for example, today we know some of them use expired bread, which right. is almost free. Correct. Right, but yours will come with a cost, yeah. and that will not be sustainable for them. Correct. So maybe just to hear your Correct. thoughts on Correct. this too. Yeah. Just like some investor meeting. Okay. <laughs> right. So I uh, answering your first question, right? So we understand that you know food waste. I mean, people are asking us, so how are you going to secure this food waste and stuff like that? So I think there are two, I'll say two types of uh, companies that we actually often see. Right. We have the kind that we talk about conglomerates where they have a lot of food waste, and to them, this is something for them to do as a CSR. Because they see that as, as some way to actually extract even more value, uh, to actually share people, hey, we're doing something CSR and stuff like that. So these are people that, no matter what, they have this food waste, and they say, this is not a revenue stream for us. We can use it. This is for us to extract more, extract more value. For another kind of, kind of waste producers, industrial, they have so much food waste. They see that you're making money. We, we, and we understand that now they're giving us for free, giving us to trial, right? Eventually, they might charge us, right? or they might do something. And that's why our business model to scale up is that we actually provide the operating know-how to pass to them and they provide the capex they provide the land to do it so in that sense that's why we're actually moving towards creating the brands at the end instead because we buy the insects back from them they produce they we buy back and we, and we create the brands that is intended for the end consumer instead the end customer so right now we're actually doing a lot of uh, trials for stream feed that we sell directly to the farmers instead it means i make the insect i use the insects i buy other ingredients and i make it into stream feed and that's where i sell to the farmers and that actually brings down my operating cost because now I don't have to, now, now I'm not an operator. I'm not a price taker. That means I don't have to sell my insects to the feed producer. I become the feed producer myself, right? And I target the, the, the end consumer. The second, the second question regarding, you know, why do farms will choose for us over it? So again, we need to really understand who are the segments, right? You got these farms that just die, die. They don't want to use any tech and stuff like that. Um, and if you see that, that's actually majority of the farmers in Southeast Asia. But we see the landscape is changing. Why? Because recently, if you see, there's this company called eFishery, um, backed by Tomasic. They actually started, you know, raising a lot of money now because at the beginning, they were, they were giving out some IoT devices to fish farms, right? To say that, oh, you use my IoT device, you can control how much feed you feed your fish and stuff like that. 
But the main problem was the middleman. They were saying like, hey, you know, I have all these underground deals, you know, I just want to steal some fish whenever there's harvest and stuff like that, right? So, so essentially, this, these are the problems that, that, we, that we saw, uh, I mean, coming as, as you highlighted, right? Like, well, why would they switch, switch over, especially when sometimes they even got underground deals to buy a certain type of feed, right? So for us, this is not our target right now. Our target are those upcoming aqua farms they were talking about in terms of they're very focused on productivity, they're very focused on the sustainability initi initiative, and they look beyond just the nutritional components. We're talking about value-added benefits that insects have, like better immunity for your fish, and that translates to commercial, uh, I would say, uh, savings for them. So that's something, that's how we target the market. Yeah. I hope I answered that question. <laughs> Those questions. Yeah. Hi, Hi yeah. hello. Hi, Sean and yeah. Shishan. Yeah, right? sure, yeah. um, thank you for, for that. And uh, you know, echoing Min Desmond, I think yeah. it's a developed idea. And congratulations on winning the President Social Enterprise thank Startup you. Award. Um, my two questions are, you're using insect protein for animal feed Correct. and pet food. Correct. Right, that's essentially the Correct. innovative value mm -hmm. proposition. Have you done sort of more extensive user um, survey, do Correct. they have any concerns about, yep. I mean, if I'm a pet owner, yep. <laughs> do I want to feed <laughs> insect for teams uh, to my pets? Do you foresee any challenges for adoption at scale, yep. be it these users for animal feed or users for pet food, right. beyond the initial you know, 10, 20% Correct. early adopters or progressive Correct. folks? Yep. Or do you foresee any challenges? For the, for, I'll be for the seafood market, not so much, uh, because most of these are still farms. So consumers don't see the, uh, the, what, what goes into the feed. So there's not much of, I would say, um, uh, objection. But I would say for the, for the pet food market, right, uh, that's something where a lot of education has to come in place. That's the first thing. Uh, education about you know, how the insects are being farmed. Right? Because if you see right now for the insect industry, um, there's a lot of regulation going on because the fact is that it's very hard to understand where you, what, what kind of food ways you feed your insects. I could be feeding chicken manure for all, for, I know, for all I know, right? So that's very important. And that's why for us, uh, we have an operating system we're developing to make sure that all these processes are traced and tracked. Uh, and that's the reason why um, European companies, uh, those pet food manufacturers, right, where they have a more established consumer market, um, they make sure that you know, the source of where they get insects from are very, is, is, is traceable, it's very important, it's clear. It means it's, uh, you have the licenses involved, right? So that's something that, that we, we target. And that's why we want to create, we find that this is our core competency. We know we're in Singapore, um, it's very recognized in terms of the brand. Um, that's why we see, hey, we can actually do that here. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that, um, I mean, beyond all this education awareness and stuff like that, I think there's a growing trend uh, to say that, you know, a lot of uh, people are more, uh, they, they want their pets to have better nutrition. So not just, we're not just talking about sustainability here already, right? And this is where a lot of trials have to be put in place to say that, okay, there's a lot of other value-added benefits. Um, one thing that they have found out is that insects actually um, help. There's this hypoallergenic benefits that it provides for, insect, uh, for, for dogs and cats. I mean, someone was telling me, the cat is not going to like hunt a cow, right? And, and eat, but this is actually essentially what cat food is made out of most of the time, right? But your dogs and cats are going to hunt insects, right? And this is part of their natural diet. Yeah. So a lot of education. <laughs> Okay, we did pass the time. Um, yeah, maybe just yeah, final yeah. comment. Just a quick one. Yeah. Uh, what is the cost mm. compared to the pet food today mm. versus the, your product? Okay, so right now uh, pet food, I mean, on, it really depends on the, on, the, on the range, right? But I would say for us, we're targeting the, the, the dry food, the kibbles, right? So about kilo is about 10 plus dollars on average for the premium range. Um, that's the kind of price we're targeting. Uh, and that's because we're talking about consumer. Right. If I'm targeting my shrimp feed, right, the same cost of production can be as low as two, three dollars, right? But I mean, it's, I'm selling at different prices right now. Yeah, com I mean, compared to your shrimp feed to your to your B two B and B two C markets. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We come okay. to the end of it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.